Conversational hymn is number 525, The Church is One Foundation. Please stand. <laughs> St. Wilfred on the second Sunday of Lent. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts with the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of the Lord. Please join me in singing our responsorial psalm, which is found in your insert. I will intone first, and then have you join me in singing. A reading from Paul's epistle to the Romans. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who works without works, trust him who justifies the ungodly, 
such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be granted to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, and calls into existence the things that do not exist. The word of the law. Please join us in singing our sequence hymn, which is found in your blue hymnal number 168. Blue hymnal number 168. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. 
Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after growing old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it has come from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into the heavens except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 This passage that we've just heard from the Gospel of John is perhaps the most, contains perhaps the most quoted verses in the whole New Testament. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world, through him, might be saved. Um, I find those words uh, both encouraging and troubling sometimes. Um, they are often uh, taken as a sort of uh, a requirement rather than a, a promise or a gift. Uh, I don't really like born-again talk that I hear from many Christians because they're often saying, I'm born again, I've joined the club, you know. I, I have become a member of the church, therefore, you know, I get things that other people do not. So I do believe that we need to be born again, but I don't see that as a, as a one-time decision, but as a process that happens again and again as we are restored to that you know basic creation that we're given as image of the uh, image of God in us 
that we get restored to over and over again as we fail to live up to that image and need to be kind of restored and built back into the people that we are called to be. How do we get reborn? Well, I think, you know, this Lenten season is a reminder that we, we have to begin by, you know, taking a look at our lives. And uh, so we are invited day by day through the season of Lent to actually look at what are the ways in which we are, you know, living out Christ's promises and Christ's gift, the gifts, you know, given us at our, at our birth. And what are the ways in which we're failing to live in the image of God and be Christ's brothers and sisters? What are the ways in which we need to be repaired and restart? And uh, this is the time for us to try and discern those things and to uh, re repeatedly uh, ask that gift. This uh, whole story about Nicodemus uh, coming before uh, Jesus is really uh, all about that. Um, when Jesus says, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above, it means that the ability to see the kingdom of God in this very mixed and broken world that we live in is a gift from God. It's something that we are blessed with. And we indeed, as Christians, can look around and often say, it's not there yet, but I can see how the kingdom of God might be coming forth in some really surprising places, places where people of different backgrounds, different races, different cultures actually come together in, in ways that are you know, effective, really kind of acting like one family in spite of all the differences that might otherwise divide us. That is a little glimpse of the kingdom, a little glimpse of the vision that God has for the world. So I believe that our allegiance to Jesus is not just about saying, yes, I believe in him and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow him, I put my trust in him, but it's also about um, taking on into our own hearts and lives that vision for this world that drove Jesus. And, you know, Jesus was able to do the wild and courageous things that he did often because he had this vision of the kingdom that was, you know, different from the world we see around us. Jesus knew that God has things in mind for this world that have not yet been accomplished. And as Jesus' brothers and sisters, we know that too. We gather week by week to be nourished by the scriptures. We gather week to week to be nourished by the body and blood of Jesus that we are about to share. We gather to be nourished by one another with the fellowship that we share. This, my brothers and sisters, is God's gift to us. I love looking back to these lessons about Abraham that we receive today. It would be so easy to see him as a, as, a, as a flawed patriarch. And yet we're told that, um, like us, Abraham was gifted with God's blessing. Abraham was treated like a, a beloved child of God. Abraham was given amazing things to do, to live out, to carry out in this, in this world of ours. Abraham believed in God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. That's what we are called to do too, brothers and sisters. We cannot be perfect human beings. No matter how much we try or how much we care, we will continue to fail sometimes and to make mistakes. But like our Lord Jesus, like our brother Abraham, we can indeed live into the world that God has given us to live into, pursue the kingdom that God has given us, love one another as God's beloved children, and follow the path that he has given us to follow. We give thanks for this today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
I invite you to stand as you are able and join in the reaffirmation of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate and suffered death and was buried. The third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people is form three. Sit, kneel, or stand at your comfort level. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Please add your petitions. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. Father. In, in your, your compassion, compassion forgive us, us our sins, sins known and, and unknown. unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please join me in singing our offertory hymn, which is found in Wonder, Love, and Praise, the Green Book here, number 811. Be Not Afraid, Wonder, Love, and Praise, number 811.
the Holy Eucharist is offered to the glory of God in thanksgiving for Jesus Christ. And in remembrance of Larry Metz, who was a very good junior warden here in this parish, and in honor of Keith Miller's birthday and her anniversary, would have been her anniversary. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxy suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood you reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with a heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and our mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of, of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only, not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Rich is the Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
please join me in singing our post-communion hymn, which is found in your blue hymnal, number 149, Eternal Lord of Love. Blue hymnal, number 149. <laughs> communion prayer is found on page 366 for those of you who are streaming with us let us pray almighty and ever living god we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your son our savior jesus christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. And Father Ebb, you're up first. That's me. <laughs> uh, I just want to, uh, can you all hear me? I just want to make sure that you're aware that for now till the fifth Sunday in Easter, <laughs> Easter in Lent, um, we, will, we will be meeting for 30 minutes following the service oh my God, to talk about some very serious uh, things about the time of Lent. This is going to be an opportunity 
to ask yourself some serious questions, which is what Lent is all about. It's not about guilt. It's about growth and moving into something that is not necessarily something we always do. Uh, we will take a moment to reflect on what it means to be made in the image of God. What does that mean? We're going to take a look at it. In fact, we're going to start today. Uh, how does that impact uh, who you are and owning up to who you really are as a person, being made in the image of God? Because that's the way it all begins for all of us. What we become here and now is what well, we'll talk about this uh, as we meet. So anyway, um, Get there'll be a lot of in questions, and we'll work on answers. If you grab a cup of coffee and come on in, what's the, what's the room we're meeting in? You get your food in O'Brien, and you have your class in, in Ricker, and right. whatever chairs you move in Ricker, Father Ev, you put them back. I probably understand. It'll be an hour yesterday, but I've had another time today. Right. But it's a good chance to be together, and uh, as I say, it'll be 30 minutes, and then we'll all be on our way. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody who stepped up while I was on vacation, in particular Jean. Um, and Ruth, who you can't see because she, Joe brought back a coal from their trip, and now she has it. So she's got that coal, that crud that Bill and I had, um, and everything. My children, my children were overwhelmed with your generosity of spirit. Um, my son-in-law was dealing, he's the crisis manager for the University of the South, Vice President of Crisis Management, and uh, there was an incident at the University of the South, and they got here late, and... My daughter will be late to her own funeral. But uh, there will always be something. But this was serious stuff. So they didn't get a chance to meet absolutely everyone that was in here. But they loved it. They're coming back. My son-in-law did not want to leave. We've been doing some reno on my house. And they took twice. I had a list. They did twice as much as they needed to do. And, um, but they will be back. And, uh, and I want to thank all of you for making them see the heart of this congregation. Tuesday, uh, Father Ev, Father Andy, and I were with our Bishop Doug, and what a fabulous human being. And uh, we, are so, we were so lucky to hear the clear call. I was about third prelude back going up to meet him because I didn't bother with all those people who did this, you know, the first couple of times he's around. And he called me by name. He knew which church I was from, and he talked about how wonderful you all are. And uh, he said, uh, and I said, how do you know who I am? Did, he said, I see you on the web. <laughs> but that's a class act. We had a fabulous day. And one of the things that happened was uh, Bishop Wright from Atlanta was there as our speaker. And, and uh, with permission, of course, we, they, you know, ahead of time, he asked where the, uh, what were the elephants in the living room. And the priest told the truth. And they spent a lot of time talking about the real issues in this church, in this diocese, about the underserved, the women, the people of color, the people of, uh, with different uh, identities, and the children and everybody else that was left out in this diocese, and they let it rip. And I think that's a class a leader that can tell, hear the truth. I mean, he knew, the, Bishop Doug knew the truth. But to allow the time for that to come out and start dealing with it in a real way, uh, we have such an exciting life ahead of us in this new period of time, and I can't wait for him to come here. He heard our story about the spirit moving among our delegates. Uh, he said, you have no idea how profound it was for me, what was going on, and, and uh, so forth. So I'm looking forward to his visit one day, and we'll have a chance to see him again. Um, last Sunday, I appreciated the beautiful food. I thought about my poor great-grandmother, and what she would be saying today is, uh, we were eating all that food, and enjoying it. And she would be laughing and carrying on. And she also always saw people in their goodness. She always looked at life as an adventure. And that's who we are. And she loved her Lord. I have all of her rosaries. I have all of her medals. I have everything. That, in case anybody needs a medal or a rosary, I got plenty. And, uh, but her love of Jesus, and she shared that with her children, and obviously her children's children. Um, and my father was a very devout individual, and it was because of the love she shared with him as she raised him. So, anybody else? Bill, you have anything to say? Uh, just two things. Uh, one about the choir. If anybody is interested in joining the choir or singing with us, we meet at 9 o'clock in the choir room. Just come on in the choir room, and um, we 
we'd love to see you there. Second thing is uh, Easter Sunday. We, between the two services, we are going to have a breakfast. So there'll be a sign-off sheet next week. There'll be one in here, and then there'll be one in O'Brien also. So please sign up if you're coming for breakfast. Uh, we're going to have a full breakfast, so there'll be lots of food. Nothing after the 10 o'clock service, so those of us who are here can have a chance to be with our loved ones as well. So it'll be between, the service will be at 7, and so after the service, between the two services is when our brunch is taking place. Buddy. In the back row. Oh, in the back row. Yes, Chris. Um, in the pamphlet it says, uh, on Sunday, April 10th, yeah. I have on my phone that it's on Yeah, uh, G knows. Uh, Y'all. Y'all, she was trying to cover the bases while I was gone. She set the tables. I didn't have to set them this morning. Uh, our Jean is fabulous, and uh, I think if ever yeah, she really is. And um, we don't, you know, y'all try to do a bulletin around here. You ought to really try to do it. Everybody comes up with great ideas Thursday afternoon. The bulletins are, are folded on Wednesday. Okay. Yes, Chris. Yay, day, next week is Daylight Savings. Chris is in charge of ushers, and so for the new people, there are new people who'd like to usher, it's painless. Painless. So speak, please speak to Chris. Are we? Okay, buddy. Yes, we had 114 folks this week. Wow, Our new numbers, our new numbers are ranging between 110 and 120. So that appears to be where we are for right now. And folks are very thankful and things are going along very well. They appreciate the space, both in uh, O'Brien and Rucker Hall. And uh, we're doing a good job in terms of keeping it square. So thank you for all your support. My children said, I do not want to hear any more about the food pantry mother. I do not want to hear any more. You're going to have two food pantries built before you retire. She, I said, well, do you get it? Yes, I get it, and I'm sure they're getting it. So anyway, priest kids, two, my son-in-law's son, father was a priest. You know, they get mouthy. That's all I can say. All right, what our closing hymn what, in our bulletin is what? Is blue hymnal number 388. We will sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. Blue hymnal number 388, verses 1, 2, 3, and 5.
serve Christ by welcoming all, transforming lives, and growing the church. Thanks be to God.